They were expected to uphold the rules that keep soccer honest and to protect the integrity of the game. Instead, they corrupted the business of worldwide soccer to serve their interests and to enrich themselves. This Department of Justice is determined to end these practices, to root out corruption, and to bring wrongdoers to justice. Now, reports out of Qatar regarding the deaths of migrant workers employed in the country. More than 6,750 migrant workers have died in Qatar since the Gulf nation was selected to host the World Cup, according to analysis by The Guardian in the UK. There was that recent amnesty report, which says you failed on the promises to tackle migrant worker exploitation. What is your response to that? I don't agree one bit when they say we failed. Was Qatar treated unfairly? Yes, in my opinion, very much so. The World Cup El Mundial, Coupe du Monde, Copa del Mondo, or as the Germans like to call it, Weltmeisterschaft. Close enough. The World Cup is an epic event, an event that runs in four-year intervals, a dramatic sporting showcase of pride, culture, and sport. And listen, if you clicked on this video, you probably know what the World Cup is. If you're a subscriber, you've probably already seen me cover the World Cup in our FIFA video and MLS videos. But today, I'm not just looking at the competition as a whole. I'm not talking about the conspiracies in the game. I am talking about a World Cup that is just around the corner, full of controversies that seem almost unbelievable. We touched on Qatar 2022, but today, we really will be touching it. Okay, no, that sounds bad. But today, we will really dig deep down in the world's most favorite tournament and uncover the shocking truths that spit on the face of the sport. This is the Qatar 2022 World Cup Uncloaked. The World Cup has been around for a very long time. Over 118 years ago, the governing body of football was formed in Paris, France. FIFA was created to help spread the game, create fixed rulings, and bring a large international competition together. In 1930, the first ever FIFA World Cup was held in Uruguay, who went on to win it all, eventually beating Argentina in the final. Also, the United States got third place. I'm just gonna leave that stat right there for you guys. Ever since then, the World Cup has been played every four years, except those years, we don't gotta get into it. Now, in this moment of recording this video, there has been 21 World Cup champions. Brazil with five, Italy with four, Germany four, Argentina two, Uruguay two, France two, Spain with one, and England with one. Now this will change in six months or so, but that's where we're at right now. Now the World Cup is the biggest, most watched single sporting competition in the world. There have been amazing, dramatic moments. There has been scandals, conspiracies, there's been corruption. And that's where we flash forward to 2010, when FIFA, its president and governing body changed the competition and sport forever. The winner to organize the 222 FIFA World Cup is The FIFA executives got together in Zurich, Switzerland to vote on the host of the 2018 and 2022 World Cups. Now, we know Russia won the selection for 2018 and France went on to win it all. And um, before current events, this was highly controversial, but we'll get back to it. It was finally time to announce the 2022 World Cup host. The countries that were in contention were Australia, Japan, South Korea, the United States, and Qatar. And selfishly, because I live in the United States, I wanted the United States to host the World Cup. I know we've done it before, but now, even thinking ahead, I was like, okay, this could be Messi's last World Cup. Messi. Ronaldo's last World Cup. And I could potentially say goodbye. But then the selection was announced. The 222 FIFA World Cup 
is Qatar. Qatar. I was shocked. The smallest country to ever host the tournament in horrific desert heat with zero, and I mean zero, football infrastructure. And on top of that, because of the desert heat, it's being moved to, for the first time, in November and December. I, I couldn't believe what I was seeing. First Russia, and now Qatar. What is going on? You're telling me a bunch of FIFA dudes voted for this? You all agreed. But then, probably at the same time as the rest of the world, I sat back and thought, hmm, these hosts are a bit suspicious, no? A bit wealthy in dirty ways, no? I wonder if our boy Sep made sure that this happened. Eh, what do I know? I'm only 12. Uh, Spain just won the World Cup. It's lit. Shakira's Waka Waka is still stuck in my head. I'm not even gonna think about Russia and Qatar for years. I'm sure everything is fine. The select committee in the United Kingdom were informed by the England World Cup bid chief that not one, not two, but four FIFA committee members asked for an exchange of goods for their votes for the World Cup, which is also known as bribery, which is also illegal. World soccer corruption scandal threatens to blow wide open this morning. Former FIFA Vice President Jack Warner, who faces U.S. bribery charges, says he's ready to reveal everything he knows. And Warner's longtime deputy is admitting that he took bribe money. The FIFA Vice President Jack Warner wanted straight up two million buccarinos. Others got a little over a million dollars, and one of the committee members asked to be knighted. Okay, allegedly asked to be knighted but I totally believe it, which is just shocking. There's no point of having a committee to vote when it's just a straight bribery table. This news was sickening, but FIFA shut it down real quick. On May 30th, our boy, President Sepp Blatter, denied everything, rejected all the evidence, and moved on. Now, they, uh, first of all, we don't know if it's true or not true. So as long as uh, nobody is declared uh, uh, that he's, he's declared not guilty, he, not guilty, uh, so he's not guilty. He's not declared guilty, he's not guilty. Bon. Now, Russia, and Qatar already looked suspicious before this. But now, even with Sepp's press conference, everyone started to smell the fish. Some Russian and Qatari fish. Now this is where things get hilarious. In 2012, FIFA hired former US attorney Michael Garcia to investigate the allegations of bribery. The funny part is, when they hired him, he investigated it and made a report that said, yep, the old dudes were bribed. The goal has to be instilling confidence in the process beyond any particular result, but beyond any particular case. The public, the stakeholders in, in, in this have to have confidence that the process is working in a fair way. And FIFA made a statement and said, shh, the report is materially incomplete. And Garcia resigned from his position. You guys really tried to hire your own dude and failed so hard. But then my friends, little did FIFA know that the Americans were on the case. Okay, so when the former U.S. attorney resigned from his position, the whole world started looking in a little bit more closely to FIFA, and that included the FBI. Americans. Americans caring about football. This can't be. But it is the FBI, so they were probably just looking for, like, a big case to crack. You know them. But still. Let's follow their investigation. In 2011, a whistleblower named Fayedra Al-Majid came forward with evidence that Qatar paid $1.5 million to the AFCON president, an Ivory Coast FIFA member, and a Nigerian sports director in exchange for their votes for Qatar. And after coming forward, she had several death threats, she had people intimidating her face to face, and later made a statement, the FBI have everything. There are people who are annoyed with me for speaking out, and what really irks them is that I'm a female, Muslim whistleblower. I just don't think Blatter actually intends to quit. Everything he does is very calculated. He'll try very hard to save himself 
I'm sure of it. The FBI continued to dig, and the list of names got bigger and bigger. On a day in May of 2015, the sport was changed forever. Several top officials of soccer's world governing body were arrested in a massive bribery scandal. U.S. prosecutors say briefcases full of cash decided media and marketing rights, even the site of the World Cup. The news broke out and shocked the world of football. The head of the biggest football organization was ran by rats. Then two days later, FIFA President Blatter was re-elected to continue as FIFA president. And I'm pretty sure his members had no choice. A total of 41 rats were arrested. 14 convictions charged with racketeering, wire fraud, and money laundering. One month later, Jack Warner was exposed for being bribed for the 2010 South Africa World Cup. Four days after that came out, Sepp Blatter announced that he would finally resign in February. How was this man not arrested? I don't, I don't get it. In July of 2015, at a press conference, Blatter was showered with money for the world to see. Excuse me? Sorry, this is, this is starting, we're starting a press conference. Where is my security? Here we go, Seth. And in 2016, Gianni Infantino was selected as the new FIFA president, which he still holds today. Wow. That was crazy. What a crazy downfall. Well, now my friends, I'm sure the controversy ends there. What more could there possibly be? So you remember when I said Qatar didn't have any football infrastructure? Yeah, I wasn't exaggerating. They literally had nothing. No large capacity World Cup quality stadiums, no training camps, not even enough damn hotels to hold the people that will be attending the games. So they had 12 years to prepare. And um, <clears throat> they really went balls to the wall with preparing. FIFA came together and agreed that the months of the World Cup had to be moved. Instead of June, July, it would be November, December, which made sense because it's like 150 degrees in June and July. Does not make sense to have open stadiums for players that are running for an hour and a half, right? Okay, now that's great. That protects the players. The only problem is these stadiums are being built all year round. And that's when the working conditions get deadly. At least 6,750 migrant workers have been killed in Qatar since it won the right to host the World Cup 10 years ago. These people are working in the worst conditions imaginable, many being forced to stay and not allowed to leave, literally building stadiums in prison camps. Their wages get put on hold, they get random pay deductions, unpaid overtime, horrific living conditions, no running water. It's sick. And in 2017, after all this news came out, Qatar pledged that it will align its laws and practices with international labor laws. But they said pledged. And you know what that means. You still haven't donated the $7 million divorce settlement to charity. Isn't that right? Incorrect. I pledged the entirety no, of the Ms. settlement, Heard, seven million to question. charity, and I, Ms. I Heard, intend to Ms. fulfill Heard. those. Still no update with any changes. And we are six months away. The World Cup was even thought of being moved. Many people are protesting it. A lot of people are like, just move it anywhere else. The U.S. literally is ready. We have football stadiums. Just throw the in the football stadiums, and we are perfect. If there's a last minute change, what country can do it? We can. We've done it before. Not happening. Qatar is still and will be the host in six months. No doubt. I don't know how you can ignore this. I don't know how you can just play the game and not realize that, oh, you know, I'm in the stadium where 6,000 people died. I mean, it's just, but as a diehard fan, someone who's cried like a baby when his country's lost his finals, someone who has been following their national team since I could remember, it is very, very hard to, to be that type of fan and not care about the World Cup. It is, for many people like me, a dream to watch your team, your country, lift up the most beautiful 
trophy in all of sports. But it's also hard to ignore 6,000 dead people. And let's not even get into the environment, as it is very well known that a lot of these stadiums will be abandoned. We saw it in South Africa 2010, Brazil 2014, Russia 2018, and we're gonna see it again in Qatar. But if I'm being honest, I will be watching the games. I will be crying for Argentina. I will be streaming on my AFA Fan TV channel. Quick plug. But the organization that runs it might be up there with some of the worst. It's insane to be seeing this in the year 2022. Some people might disagree with me and say, I'm gonna drop all of the passion and just not watch it, which is understandable. And some people will be agreeing with me. It's hard to look past it, but it is a World Cup and it's something millions and millions and millions of people care about and wait for and dream about. I don't think there's anything we can do. We're kind of screwed. On top of that, FIFA is a nonprofit. <laughs> Just beautiful how nonprofits work and how uh, they avoid pretty much everything that has to do with taxes. But uh, that's a whole other whole other side topic. It's just. I don't know what to do as a fan. Well, this video didn't have a happy ending, uh, but thank you guys for sticking with me throughout this whole thing. If you did, uh, please let me know what you want to see next. Please, please subscribe. We're trying to hit 10,000 subs. I don't even know if that's going to happen, but uh, it's been six years and we're at 4,000. Maybe four more years and we might get it. I don't know, but please subscribe if you want to see more. Please sub our SKC Fan TV channel where we have all of my live reactions, live streams of sporting Kansas City games and for my Argentina fans or if people just want to hang out with me throughout the World Cup we're streaming again on the AFA Fan TV channel all the World Cup games for Argentina all of that is in the description for you guys to check out again thank you guys for watching this video check out our TikToks below and I'll see you guys in the next one